In the last video, I showed you that how you can perform the delete store operation. And the final thing that we want to do is we want to see how we can update the store. Now, in order to update the store, we want to go to a detail screen where we can perhaps see the store. And this is going to change once we add items to the store and all that stuff. But right now, what we want to do is we should be able to tap on any of these stores and go to the detail screen. So right now, it's not going to work. So to make them tappable, the first thing we need is, well, we need a navigation view if we want to go to a different screen. And in order to get the navigation view, we're simply going to go to the top and wrap everything inside a navigation view. There we go. Let's select everything and make sure that everything is organized. We can even go ahead and give some sort of a title, dot navigation title. And we can say stores. Okay, great. Now what we want to do is when we click or tab on a particular store name, we should go to a detail screen where we can perform the update. Currently, we don't really have any screen to go to. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and add a new Surf UI view. And I will call it Store Details View. There we go. And what we want to do is we want to pass in the store. So when we are going to the details view, it is mandatory, necessary for us to pass in the store because we will know which store we're trying to update. Let's go ahead and create a dummy store over here so that we can pass it to the Xcode preview, give it some sort of an ID and some sort of a name so that it compiles at least. Now we can go back to our content view and we can wrap this text within the navigation link. So I'm gonna go ahead and say navigation link and going to use the destination. The destination it's gonna to go to will be the store details view. And we are going to be passing in the store. The label that we are going to use is going to be the actual text that is being displayed. Let's go ahead and see it now. Here we go. And I can select all of this stuff and say Control I just to reformat a little bit. So now if I run this, I should be able to go from one screen to the other. And you can see everything is getting displayed. I don't really like to display in this particular format. So I'm just going to go to my list and say the list style will be a plain list style. This is much better. And let's go to Albertsons and you can see that it is actually going to the detail screen. Now what we want to do in the detail screen is that we want to pre-populate a text field and we want to provide a button to update the store name. So let's go to the detail screen. The first thing I'm going to do is create a state variable called store name so that whenever we type in a text field, we are going to populate the store name. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a text field. And I'm going to go ahead and populate it with store.name. So it's automatically populated as a placeholder at least. And the bindable expression will be store name. So whenever we type something in that particular text field, it is automatically updating the store name state property. And finally, we have a button which will say update. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how it looks like. Uh, we can go ahead and perhaps style it a little bit better by adding a text field style, which can be a rounded border text field style. We can even uh, add a bit of a padding to our vertical stack. And every, everything else is fine. I mean, this is not really about the UI. This is about the functionality. All right. So now what we want to do is when we press the 
update button, I'm going to go ahead and call this function, which is update store. And inside the update store, well, the first thing we need to do is to get a reference to the DB object. The same thing that we had the reference, which is right over here. So I'm going to copy import Firebase and Firebase Firestore Swift. I'm going to import both of these things and I'm going to go ahead and create a DB object, which will be Firestore.Firestore so that I have access to the Firestore so I can perform operation like update operation. Now I can use db.collection. The collection that we are talking about is called stores. That's in the Firestore database. Dot document, the document that we are talking about is the store.id. Now over here, if you look at it, store might ID might be uh, null. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unwrap it. If you are on this screen, then you will have an ID. There's no other way to get to that screen. I mean, if you want to be safe, you can do it safely, but on this screen, if you are reaching this screen, there's no way that the ID will be null. Okay, then we can go ahead and call update data and we can pass in a dictionary with the fields that we want to update. So if we go back to our Firestore database, you can see the only field that we have is a name. So I'm going to go ahead and say that go ahead and update the name for this store coming from the text box, which is store name. And this, I believe it's going to fire a completion handler, going to give me error if there is any error. We can go ahead and say if let error equals to error. If there is error, then we will simply say error dot localized description. Else we can go ahead and say that the store has been updated. Okay. And now we can go ahead and run it and see it in action. So I'm going to go back to the content view. Going to run or build the app again. Okay, there we go. So we got our three stores. Let's say that I want to change Albertsons to Walmart. I'll go to Albertsons. You can see Albertsons is already populated. Now I'll say Walmart. And if I go over here, oh no, it didn't change. You can see it's still Albertsons. So something went wrong. So we need to check out what exactly is going on and why didn't it work? And maybe I have a clue. Let's go back. We didn't really do anything over here. If you need to update, you perhaps will be interested in calling the update store function. That in change uh, done, let's go ahead and run the app again. I'm gonna click on the live preview. We can see the stores. Let's go to Albertsons and again, go ahead and change Albertsons to Walmart. And now we can see that Albertsons is now changed to Walmart. Sometimes you will see that even though you have changed it and it returned you like no error, it doesn't reflect over here that it has changed the value. Uh, so make sure that you just refresh the screen and then it will take in uh, effect, all right? Now, if I go back, I can see Walmart. Let's go ahead and change HEB to Albertsons. Albertsons update. And we can see that HEB is now changed to Albertsons. So there you have it. We have covered all the different four operations, creating, reading, updating, and deleting for a particular store. Now, obviously we are long way from home because, or long way from our goal because we still need to add items to a particular store. We need to add authentication uh, and a lot more other cool stuff. Now, all of those other new stuff that I'm talking about, like nested item, nested documents, uh, they, that will be available to patrons. So if you want to watch the new videos, which I will be working on and I will be publishing next week, best way would be to become a patron. You can see that you have different tiers. You can become part of the silver tier or the gold tier. If you really like me, then you can become a part of the gold tier. Great. 
And you can simply go to patreon.com slash azamsharp to become a patron. I don't really have to tell you, I think you already know, these videos take immense amount of time to create, to produce, to publish, and I always try to answer your questions also, right? So all of that, I do want to continue doing that. Uh, so please make sure that you, if you can, if you can support, uh, become a patron. If you're interested in my Udemy courses, then you can also check out the YouTube description with many different links to my courses, which includes SwiftUI, MVVM design patterns in SwiftUI. I actually recently published a new course, which is composable SwiftUI architecture using Redux, which is very different from MVVM design patterns. So if you're interested, that course is also available. Apart from that, thank you so much for your continuous support and I really hope that you enjoy all the videos. Thank you.